Oh, that cold opening. Enter the anime. Finally in the PlayStation era. Mega Man X4. Well, PlayStation and Genesis as well. This game was co-developed for the Genesis. Which I've never played. This is obviously the PlayStation version. This is original hardware, sort of. It's not a... It's not like a download version. So this is my original disc, but technically this is on my PS2. Which has the PS1 hardware in it, so that counts. That's original hardware, that's not emulation. Plus with PS2 I get to record via component. Oh my god, I love this game. I love this now, by today's standards, subpar opening, but I love it so much. Look at all this glorious 240p FM video. A cool sword battle. Their swords made an X because it's Mega Man X. Isn't it cool? God, this game was such a marvel. I remember being blown away by this. Look at all these men that Iris looks up to. Her crush, Zero. Her brother, Colonel. And more importantly, Double. She looks up to Double as well. Yeah, become the anime. Oh my god, who's the shadowy figure? Who could it be? Mysterious Maverick. Say the line. Mega Man X4. Oh, it's the best. The, the very best. I love this game. I love this game to death. It's so great. So the first game in the series in which you can just straight up pick. Which side would you like to play on, X or Zero? If you answered X, you answered incorrectly, because why would you play as X? Now, Zero's, uh, Zero's a really novel playthrough because this is obviously his first game in which he's available fully. He plays completely different than the way he did in X3. His offense is completely Z-Saber based. He's kind of considered to be hard mode somewhat. X5 explains that in, like, the, uh, the player select screen where it's like, recommended for more experienced players and it's just based on the concept that unlike with X you have to get up in everything's face in order to kill stuff it puts you at greater risk so it takes a little bit of skill to play a zero compared to X like maybe some uh, definitely some new abilities he plays completely differently than anything you'd face in the first three games we're taking zero because zero side is far more interesting he's funner to play as he's definitely my strong suit uh, and one other thing to note is that, unlike in future games, this title, this uh, select screen actually kind of does matter because whoever you pick, the other character really doesn't show up in the story. I think Zero is maybe in like one cutscene on X's side, and X doesn't show up at all in Zero's game. I don't think he's even mentioned. So, yippee, let's play with Zero. Now go! Destroy him! That's an order! What? Wait! Uh, 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 should assemble immediately. The same dream again. So among the many things that this game is the gold standard at, voice acting is also one of them, right? Maverick hunters emerged at the point five five six seven. They've occupied Sky Lagoon. This looks like Repliforce is doing. Repliforce. Okay, I'm on my way. You go, Zero. I wonder if the, like, animated cutscene, start of Zero's story, surprises anyone back in the day. 
Because I've been over it in the uh, X2 and 3 videos that Zero, obviously, Dr. Wily's Magnus Opus. Ma Magnum Opus? Magnum Opus. In terms of robotic creations. But if you somehow were completely oblivious to that through three games, then this game just sets the pace right away that Zero was built to be a murder machine. It's kind of like out of place. You think Mega Man is like the most Saturday morning cartoon garbage ever, right? Like the classic series is really happy, even like, even when it comes to like villainous stuff, it's all pretty upbeat. Oh, we got some stuff going on. Dragoon! You're in the 14th unit. Why? This doesn't look good, Zero. That Maverick took out the power. What? Then the Sky Lagoon will come crashing into the ground. Yes, and destroy the entire city. We have to do something. It's too late. I must escape now. You'd best do the same, Zero. Damn, if the Sky Lagoon falls. It'll be disastrous. There's no time. I'm going down. Ready. Well, this city's fucked. The carnage. It's horrible. Those Mavericks will pay for this. Oh yeah, Mega Man's like a really... You know, cartoony feel to it. You know, it's very campy. Even Dr. Wily in the original series, he's just like a freaking Saturday morning cartoon villain. Ah, I'll get you next time, Mega Man! World domination and whatnot. Meanwhile, you forget that, like, under real life standards, Dr. Wily would be like the biggest mega terrorist who's trying to destroy the world. And I guess he's come as close as ever because Zero's a killing machine and he developed a virus that turns robots into destructive killing machines. What's up, Iris? Iris, what are you doing here? Are you okay? Zero, did you come to save me? Yes, hang on. A huge maverick appeared and... Stay here, Iris. I'll handle it. Is this really one of Repl Forces? I don't have a moment to spare. I have to defeat him or else. Uh, let's go fight the boss. Look at this big green asshole. You gonna land a hit on me at all, buddy? We'll find out. So, Iris. This is a little confusing because I think Iris is in one, if not both, of the Mega Man Extreme Game Boy Color games. And I can't remember whether... I guess those came out after this game, but they're set before this game? It's kind of weird, because Iris just gets, like, dropped into the story. And it's like, oh, well, she has a relationship with Zero, but I don't know her. Zero, long time no see. Colonel, what are you doing here? I've come to save my sister, Iris. I only hope she's okay. She's fine. I just rescued her. Oh? Thanks, Zero. I owe you one. Colonel, I have a question for you. Did your unit attack this place? What are you talking about? Rebel Force came here for help. We weren't involved in the attack. They suspect you've become a maverick. What? Disarm and come with me to the HQ. I'm afraid I can't. Soldiers never drop their weapons. I won't do it, not even for you, Zero. Then they'll think you're a maverick. So be it. The Repla Force prefers war over dishonor and shame. Goodbye, Zero. Wait, Colonel, listen to me. Damn, this isn't good, Colonel. They may decide the entire Repla Force is a group of mavericks. This game kind of has a story. It's really bizarre. I mean, there's no there's no point in trying to apply logic to the Mega Man story world. But there's this big army of Reploids called the Repl Force. Now, how they come to exist, why human society would endorse there ever being an army of just Reploids, 
I don't know. They seem to act independently of human society. I don't know what's up with that, but they seem official. But this incident happens at the beginning of this game, and apparently they might be responsible for it, or at least they've been set up to look like they're responsible for it. And Zero being a Maverick Hunter is like, you guys should like clear that up and make sure you clear your name. And Colonel's just like, nope, we're not going to do that. Uh, wise decision. So that leads to these events. Brave soldiers of Repliforce, we have all been wrongfully judged as mavericks by the humans. We cannot suffer this indignity and live in disgrace. We will build our own nation of Reploids. But remember, this is neither about insurrection nor rebellion against our human creators. This is about our liberty and security. We must battle for our own individual rights and our own survival. Together, we will build our nation, a sanctuary for all Reploids, our own utopia. Let us forge onward towards a new golden era for the Repliforce. I too share the general sentiment. Take heed, we have no other choice. Let us fight valiantly, with courage and pride. Without fear, for we are the Repliforce. The most powerful army in history! <laughs> the General has finally taken action. And now, my Maverick Hunters, what will you do? I'll be watching closely from here on out. <laughs> Oh my god, who could that mysterious maverick possibly be? Iris, what are you doing here? My brother Colonel started the coup. I know. Please, don't fight against him. This must be some kind of mistake. They've occupied several cities already. As a hunter, I must stop them. Zero! I must go now. Jungle, infiltrate enemy occupied jungle and destroy the weapon under construction. Cyberspace, a bug has corrupted the network. Dive into cyberspace and exterminate it. Air Force, the Repo Force ship has taken off. Pursue and blast it out of the, out of the air. Thought it would say sky. Volcano, Dragoon of the 14th unit is a traitor. Locate and bring him back to, to Hunter HQ. What? He's a traitor. I can't believe it. Marine base. Ripple Force decimated the city and left. Pursue them aboard a land chaser. The abandoned lab is now operational. Investigate and destroy the lab. Military train. Military train is moving supplies. Cut off Ripple Force's supply route. And Snowbase, we've discovered a hidden Snowbase. Halt production of their new weapon. Alright, so I believe five of these uh, bosses in this game are technically part of Repel Force. They're part of the army. While three are defined as traditional Mavericks, including Dragoon, who we're going to go take down first. He betrayed the irregular hunters and hid himself inside a volcano. Oh, man, I love those X4 intros. And now we can play the game proper. This game is so good. Like, it's so, so good. And it looks fantastic. At least on my end, it does. That's the power of the RGB frame meister. So I'm not gonna you know, like, get ahead of myself, whoops, and there I go getting hit, but I would like to think that I'm pretty good at this game. I have played this game many, many times, as it is a childhood favorite of mine, probably the childhood favorite. This game still ranks, I believe, fourth. This is my fourth favorite game ever made, period. And definitely my favorite Mega Man game, whoops, didn't mean to get hit but by that fireball. One downside of this game, because it's nearly a perfect game, but one little 
quote-unquote flaw is what we just saw. For some reason, stages are divided into halves in this game, which is a little unusual because, I mean, obviously the Super Nintendo games didn't have that. The Super Nintendo games, why would there be loading screens? But this game does have loading screens and it's on CD, obviously. But it's weird because uh, the games that follow this on PlayStation don't have that. So I don't know if it was just, like, why this game has it. Maybe, I don't know, this is just speculation. Maybe it has something to do with the fact it was co-developed for Genesis. Because obviously you can run these kind of games on PlayStation without those loading screens, given X5 and 6 don't have them, but whatever. Oh yeah, right armor, baby. So the coolest thing about the right armor in this stage is you can go down here, you can actually fight Dragoon with the right armor. But I didn't take any hits in it on my way here. Zero. It's really you. Why did you betray us? Answer me, Dragoon. I have no answer for you, my friend. Dragoon! Well, unfortunately for you, I have a right armor, so this is going to be really easy. Now, I'd like to beat him without him destroying the right armor, but that can be tough to do. You gotta be really pinpoint with your dodges, which isn't easy because your hitbox is enormous in this thing. I think the last time I played the game, I was able to do it, but I've never been great at it. Oh, I'm gonna get hit. Oh, darn. That's probably gonna cost me the right armor. Yeah, the right armor is about to blow up, but I can kill him before it does. There it goes, but a really easy victory. He can be tough without it. I wanted to defeat you. Then he appeared. He who? He told me he'd give me power only if I worked for Repla Force. What? I couldn't refuse the offer. Sorry, Zero. Dragoon! Oh my god, who could he be referring to? You'll never guess. So, Zero's, like, learned skill set is completely different from X's. Rather than getting your standard, uh, like, attacks that work on weapon gauges, you know, you can pick them and it consumes weapon energy, Zero instead learns, like, special attacks that are button combinations. So usually it's, you know, it's nothing complicated. It's like, hold up and the attack button and you can do the thing that we just got, I think. And they all have like Japanese names that the guy who voices it d doesn't know how to pronounce, but whatever, <laughs> don't worry about that part. I believe only one of Zero's learn weapons will actually focus or uh, work on a weapon gauge. So weapon energy doesn't really matter with Zero. He can do his stuff infinitely. Ready. So this is it. Oh no, wait, it's triangle. There we go. Gotta remember that. Up in triangle to do the, uh, whatever it's called, Ryujin? Is that what it was called? Does it say on the start menu? It might. Yeah. Ryujin? game's so good. Zero is such like a refreshing change of pace. Something so satisfying about using the Z-Saber. Gotta make sure I get into the zone though. Takes a while, but the muscle memory never leaves it. This game really is to uh, use the old cliche, like riding a bicycle. Oh, I want that. Give me the, yeah, there we go. Oh, almost got hit. 
You bastard. Also, this game doesn't have like nearly as much stuff to collect as X3 did. So uh, I think it's a faster game overall, but maybe it won't feel that way. Maybe it won't end up being... Because like usually when someone like me sits down to play this game, like who cares about the text or the dialogue or whatever, just mash through it, who gives a damn. But I will obviously stop to do it for video, since I'm like documenting these games. I also know like every voiced line in this game by heart because I've played this game so many damn times. I'm telling you man, this, this game was a huge part of who I was as a kid. Pretty sure the first time I, I played it was a rental. You see, there used to be this crazy era where we used to rent video games from these things called video stores. Uh, what am I talking about? You already know that. I actually finally bothered to uh, look into my average demographic on YouTube because I didn't really know what it was like necessarily where my viewers were coming from and whatnot and I was pleasantly surprised that uh, most people fell within my demographic that it wasn't like uh, people under the age of 18 not to say they weren't anyone but there's a lot of uh, 18 to 34 I was like oh that makes sense I guess that's kind of where my appeal range is. But yes, for all you youngins, we used to rent video games. And undoubtedly, I played this game through Blockbuster. Back when Blockbuster was on top of the world. Ah, Zero, I've been expecting you. Spider, you work for Repleforce? Yes, I lead a renegade unit now. There's still time. Call off the coup. No. I know where my loyalties lie. Alright, Web Spider, interesting boss fight, because he can put up a bit of a fight. He has, uh, his attacks just do a lot of damage. The key is not getting hit, which sounds obvious, you know, any fight, but it's really key with him. Because you only get so many opportunities, you only get so many chances. You can get him, hit him three times in like one of these cycles, but ah, it can be tough. There we go. I got three that time. All right, phase two. This one can be rather tough. The biggest thing is don't run into him. It becomes a lot easier to do so in this phase. So you can see these attacks are doing a lot of damage to me. Miss. See? The fight ends up being coming a lot closer than I would like it to be. And only Dragoon gets like a special little post-fight scene because he's the Maverick Hunter traitor. Everyone else just dies. Oh, Zero's pose is so cool. So much cooler than X's like triumphant fist pump. Let's me shoot out a an electrical sword. All right, let's think. What do I want now? Uh, probably split mushroom. This is one of the three Mavericks, along with Dragoon. Traditional Mavericks. He occupies the laboratory and will attack whoever visits there. Kind of reminds you of Wire Sponge, right? These guys I don't like. Because they're on staircase. Can't just jump over them. Oh, I don't have a sub tank yet, that's right. You son of a bitch. Is that it? Yep. Come on. Taking bad hits here. 
God, those little flying guys are kind of cheap, aren't they? Oh my god, this stage is so cool because there's so many different sections. Like, this kind of feels like a classic Mega Man area. Just going straight vertical like this. Darn it. God, I went up the frickin' ladder too quick. Ah. Uh. God, I'm doing really bad. There we go. Now I just gotta get past this little mini-boss. Come on, buddy. Just repeat the same process for every block. Okay, get him to destroy this one. Obviously, you can screw this up and run out of platforms. But that's not a problem with me. And loading screens do heal you, so that's one advantage to them. Different staircase. Yeah, just go. Don't don't worry about what's chasing you. Just go, swing, get through it. No, no point in stopping to deal with what's behind you. Okay, this is where I might screw up. Oh, I blew it. I don't, oh, it is possible. I can get it without that platform, nice. This is a little nerve-wracking, isn't it? Eh, I know where all- oh, darn it! <laughs> I know where all the things are gonna appear, so... It's not that big a deal. Play like a little bit of elevator music for this part. Just gotta wait it out. And that's the end of the stage. They're kind enough to give you a little bit of health and weapon energy. Neat little boss arena right here. So you don't go through like a typical hallway to get to split mushroom. You made it this far. I'm impressed. You interested in a real challenge? Who's your commanding officer? Never mind that. It's time to fight. So there's uh, the latest weapon I got from Web Spider. It'll destroy his soul body. That's what that attack is called that he's using. It'll also mess him up. The key to him is you have to time exactly when it is that he's going to drop to the floor when he's on the wall. Because if, uh, if you don't time your attacks right, you can easily fall in between your like electric attack. And if he does that, he goes to, into a completely different uh, attack animation. And he'll start doing the thing where he creates a copy of himself and he starts doing like loops around the arena. It's easier with Axe. Because X's version of Web Spider's weapon just sh shoots out like a projectile, and you can hit him with it even when he's on the uh, 
on the wall, but you can't hit him with with uh, the same equivalent with zero. So that's why you just got to Z saber him when he's on the wall, and then hit him with the electricity when he drops down. All right, who's up next? I believe for time, Frost Walrus is the optimal selection. This is like my favorite sage too. He protects the secret weapon which lies inside the snow base. He's covering up his own text. You gotta love that. And the only reason I really love the stage is because there are Easter eggs in it. That's Blizzard Buffalo behind us. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, should I? I guess I should go down here first. This first part actually has multiple ways, but up here, that was the heart tank I just got. Let's see. I still don't have any sub tanks. Let me think about where the sub tanks are in this game. Also, there are only two in this game. They reduced it from four. I would like this extra life, please. See, there's another complete different way up there. But uh, it just has like some health and weapons and whatnot. Also, Split Mushroom's weapon for zero lets me do this little rolling attack in the air, which is super cool. It's a big trademark of Zero's attack patterns in the PlayStation Mega Man X games. But it also gives me the ability to double jump, which gives me this. It's a completely new type of pickup, a new tank. Easy to miss, too because it's not like it has a space on the pause screen. What it does is it changes the amount of default lives you have at the start of a game. So say I get a game over and I have to restart a stage or go to a different stage. Rather than starting with two lives, I think you start with like four or five. It's a pretty well hidden item just because it's completely new. Okay, there's Chill Penguin in the back on the right. I think that's it in terms of cameos. There are other things that are frozen inside of the ice in the stage, but it's not bosses. I think they're like enemies from previous games or something. I'm not sure. This thing hates the fire. That's actually like a bigger challenge if you fight it as X. X's version of Magma Dragoon's attack doesn't do multiple hits at a time when you use it like that. And I hope it goes without saying that. Zero, of course, does not get any armor upgrades the way X does. The locations in which you would find Dr. Light capsules on X's side of the game have nothing on Zero's side. So I've already been past at least a couple of them where you would pick up armor if you were playing as X. Uh, let's see, where is it? Should be... there it is. So, and this cube right here is the weapon tank. There's now a sub-tank specifically for weapon energy. You would think that, like, oh, that's not useful at all if you're playing a Zero, right? Because Zero doesn't have weapon energy. Well, not necessarily. He has one weapon that uses weapon energy. And it's arguably his strongest attack. And it uses up weapon energy really quickly. So, for using that one particular attack, the weapon tank is actually pretty useful. I would say it's actually uh, very useful in the second to last boss fight. And I just picked up a big thing of weapon energy right there. So that went straight to the tank. What's that blonde kid up to? I don't have time for you, Junior. Hey, shut up and fight already. Oh, that does it. You're going down. I like the fact that Zero doesn't even negotiate. He's just like, whatever. I'm I'm done dealing with you Repo Force assholes. 
Oh, I screwed up the pattern. I forgot how to fight him for a second. You don't want to use the fire right away. You want to Z-Saber him. Whoops. And then use it on his approach. Ooh, didn't mean to get hit by that. So Frost Walrus is definitely the first boss in the game, which I actually beat as a child. Doing that stereotypical thing where the Let's Player talks about his childhood experiences with insert game. This is the game that I really cut my teeth with in terms of Mega Man X games, because I didn't actually own the first three games. I had played a lot of them before playing X4, but I didn't own them. I had to play them at a friend's house. Didn't have a Super Nintendo. Family was kind of poor. So I went from the NES age, I went from owning an NES to owning a PlayStation. That was my big jump. I completely missed the fourth generation. Until later. Eventually, I did buy a Super Nintendo with my own money. Oh, we're halfway through uh, the Mavericks. I've got a message from Repiforce! Zero. I'll be at the Memorial Hall. Be there. Oh, we got called out. Don't go, Zero! Don't fight him! This is a matter of personal pride now. There's no avoiding this. I must go. Aw, oh, yeah. Time for cutscene. Colonel! What? I'm disappointed in you, Colonel! <laughs> what do you think you're doing? doing? It's not, not too late. late. Stop, Stop the, the coup, coup now! now. No. Never. If that's your decision... decision? Very well, Very well then. then. I'll, I'll spare your life for now. now. But next, next time, there'll, there'll be no mercy. Zero, Zero please! Don't fight, fight with my brother! brother. If, if you do, I'm afraid of what you will end up! Someone must stop Rebel Force! Zero! I played this game a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know all the lines. These gold standard video game voice acting lines. Man, people get too hung up on this game's voice acting. There's uh, one scene in particular, which we haven't seen yet, but people kind of rag on the game for it. I'm like, man, take it easy, guys. Don't make it into a meme game just because the voice acting was bad in 1997. The game's awesome. He lives in cyberspace and wants to destroy the network system. This is a cool stage, but it's a bit of a gimmick stage. But when you're good at the game like me, it doesn't matter. In fact, I would say if you've never played a Mega Man X game and you wanted to get good and you wanted to like learn how to play it effectively, this stage is like the training ground. So you are ranked based on your time, maybe damage taken as well. So uh, this was not an automatic thing as a young man. I had to get good at this, and I've already screwed up. Don't worry, they're not completely unforgiving. Thankfully, Wire Sponge's weapon, and not Wire Sponge, Split Mushroom's weapon, destroys those yellow ball things. It's easier with X. X gets Soul Body, which uh, just puts out the like the like holographic projectile form in front of you. So with X, you don't even have to hit the attack button. You can just freaking dash through everything. But with Zero, you gotta use your saber. Oh, I screwed up. That was kind of weird. I both hit it, and it hit me as well. 
So if you don't get S rank, you can still move on. You might have to get at least A, I'm not sure. But if you get S, you go into these like side area rooms where you get uh, you get power-ups. We got an extra life, a sub tank, and a uh, heart. But with X, you get... Rather than an extra life, he gets all three good things. He gets a heart, a sub tank, and then a Dr. Light capsule. Darn it. Simple enough. Is that the end of the stage? I think it is. Yeah. These stages feel a lot shorter than I remember. I guess it's because I've played X2 and 3 right before playing this one. So I have a bit of a better perspective. So Cyber Peacock also a maverick and not part of Rapid Force. I'm impressed you made it this far. But you can't beat me. Get ready. His dialogue is a lot more interesting if you uh, are playing his ex. So Zero's like weakness cycle in terms of uh, the, what the bosses are weak to is not traditional compared to the Mega Man X games. With X, it's a perfect circle. It's the standard perfect cycle. But with Zero, some of the bosses are weak to multiple things. So you would think that like, oh, is he weak to split mushrooms? Because, uh, let's see, I'll try to hit him with it. So that's Split Mushroom's attack, but Split Mushroom's attack doesn't have a special property to it, except against those uh, yellow orb ball things. It's just, it's supposed to be just considered like the new jumping Z Saber, but more efficient. So because it doesn't have a property to it, they for some reason decide to double up and have Cyber Peacock weak to Magma Dragoon's weapon. Which doesn't carry over in Exocide. On Exocide, he's weak to Soul Body. And Magma Dragoon's weapon, I don't think, does anything to him on Exocide. So there are some subtle differences between the Zero side and the X side, but they are essentially the same game. The biggest thing is that uh, Iris isn't in X's story. And instead, X has to deal with a rookie hunter named Double. Okay, what's next? Also, that uh, weapon that Cyber Pe Peacock just gave me is the best. Um, God, it's been a while since I've done this. So, I guess we should go do Storm Owl now. I hope that's right. I don't think there's anything in this stage that I can't get. If there is, that's going to be embarrassing. Ready. So Cyber Peacock's weapon is the one that uses weapon energy, as you can see up there. Yay, right armor. This right armor can shoot charge shots. I would like to keep this right armor as well. Just got the heart tank. That's all I really needed. It's a lot easier to get that heart tank if you have the right armor. So many of these little leggy guys. I'm almost at the end. Of the first half, that is. There we go. I don't think there's anything else in this stage for Zero. On Nexus side, there is a uh, armor piece coming up. Which I think you can maybe get to a Zero, maybe not. It's actually like one of the harder like upgrades to ever obtain in a Mega Man X game because it's right up that set of spikes up there. 
So I don't know if Zero can actually get up there. I'm not going to try, but the way to get it to access to use Web Spider's weapon, which shoots out like a little, a little web that you can actually wall jump off of. So Will placed one of those. Whoops, I'm doing this wrong. There you go. That attack really screws this guy up. Another mini boss fight that's way more easy with Zero than it is with X. Why did you judge us as Mavericks? Wait, stop the coup! No, we're justified in doing this. Oops. Alright, let's use that uh, Cyber Peacock weapon. So it is the quote-unquote Giga attack with Zero, which is kind of inspired by an attack he would do in X2 if you fought him. This version's way cooler though. And I think from like every game onwards, Zero has some version of this attack one way or another. It sort of became like his signature go-to move. Darn it. What does that make now? Six? We're blowing through this game. Let's see, which one is this? I don't even remember. Enhanced Z-Saber. Okay, it's nothing. So it's not a uh, special attack, it just makes your Z-Saber stronger. I think it's purple now. Alright, let's go do Slash Beast. He defends the military train to protect the supply of goods. This is a cool stage. On a moving train the entire time. Darn it. Thought I would like destroy that thing before I could actually run into it. Oh, all those metals. One of them gave me a life. God damn it. I'm trying to over like not get hit over here, but it's happening way more often than it should. Sometimes those guys show up in Sages, and they uh, drop health for you. I think it all depends on whether or not you've been getting hit, getting hit a lot. So usually, like right before some kind of like checkpoint or whatever, there'll be one there if you need it. Well, another mini boss made. Pretty simple by Magma Dragoon's attack. Attack too early there. So there's no point in stopping to fight all this chunk. There we go, now I got the right armor. And you can destroy tops of trains with this thing. With the, uh, the cars or whatever. There's the heart tank. Interesting that they don't hide that one. They just kind of put it there for you to get. It's impossible to miss. Which I guess is kind of cool. I suppose if you hadn't played a Mega Man X before, you didn't know those things existed. 
If you got that one, you'd be like, where can I get more of these? Darn it. Little fat guys are messing me up. That's okay, because I know this health is right here at the very end. This game's really forgiving now that I think about it. Like, I'm getting hit a lot, but I'm not, like, losing all that much health. What an entrance. You dare to attack my unit? I'm gonna enjoy fighting you. I didn't even get to say anything back. The Slash Beast becomes a little interesting with Zero, because I don't think he has a weakness with Zero. His weakness on X's side would be Storm Owl's weapon. So, on Zero's side, he doesn't have one. So it just becomes a straight fight. You bastard. Now the background changes because you're out of the tunnel. That's so cool. Darn it. You're done. For a while there, I had gotten into the, the cool rhythm. When he does that dash attack, if you do a really low dash jump arc, you can hit him with the Z Saber attack in midair. I love doing that. It's so satisfying, but I didn't pull it off as many times as I would have liked. It's fun to do, though. Shipuga. I don't even remember this one. I think I know what it is, but I, I think it kind of sucks. His weapon works against Web Spider, and I think the stupid catch is that it's like impossible to hit Web Spider with it at zero. With Hex, it's just a regular projectile that you fire out, and uh, you can mess Web Spider up with it. But with zero, it's like impossible to land, so it's more of a situational attack with zero for regular sages. He destroyed the city and escaped to the sea. Okay, so this is the first big gimmick stage in a Mega Man X game. Because you're on this thing the entire time. And this is where my no death streak in this game might come to an end. Because uh, getting power-ups in this stage is kind of hard. Because they're like on your path. If you miss them, you have to come back. But like getting them might cause you to die. Especially in the second half of the stage. The second half of the stage is tricky. There's a sub tank towards the end, and uh, getting it could cost you your life. But for now, I'm not too worried about the obstacles. I'm taking damage, but it doesn't matter. Like, the first half of the stage is almost over. There we go. Took a lot of damage, but it's fine. You can dash, but uh, be careful about using it. Because if you end up like dashing straight into a wall, then the edge of the screen behind you will catch up really quickly and you'll just be squished to death. Also, Jet Stingray shows up and you can fuck him up as he... He like tries to shoot projectiles out and whatnot and make it harder. But if you do a dash attack into him in midair, he'll just give up and fuck off. See, landed it perfect that time. All right, the sub tank's coming up, so don't be surprised if I die trying to get it. I'm dead. Yeah, I dashed too early. Got the sub tank, but uh, I think because I went too early, I wasn't able to clear that gap, and I got stuck on that pillar. But now I don't have to worry about the sub tank anymore. And that's it in terms of power ups. Got all the sub tanks, got the weapon tank, got the extra life tank, and all the heart tanks.
amazing. I've been playing this game for nearly 20 years. And I still have trouble getting that sub tank without dying. Get out of here, Jet Stingray. Oh, oh, I almost died. I barely made that jump at the very end. Thankfully, they are kind enough to give you health right before fighting him. Now, I believe it was Jet Stingray in particular. Uh, I'll finish that thought in a second. Uh, he's still after me. Enough already. We settle this now. As I was saying, I believe it was Jet Stingray who caused the term Spark Mandrel Syndrome to be created. Now you'd think, what? Wouldn't Spark Mandrel cause that to be created? Well, maybe technically. But it was this fight in particular where uh, Gerard the Completionist in his original Completionist video of Mega Man X4, which I think is gone from the internet now due to the drama on their channel. But it, it might exist somewhere, I'm sure people have saved it. It was in that original review of this game that he referred to Jet Stingray as suffering from Spark Mantle Syndrome because you can easily just get him in a loop by continuously hitting him with Frost Walrus's weapon. It's a bit easier with X than it is with Zero. As you can see, I've taken some hits here, so it isn't quite Spark Mandrel. At least not with Zero, it is. With X, the, uh, the weapon that you get from Frost Walrus, the Frost Tower, I think it's called. When you jump up, it creates a big, like, wall of ice around X, and it's enormous. It has a huge hitbox, so it's a lot easier to hit him with it early than it is with this downward attack as Zero. But yeah, this is very Spark Mandrel-esque, to be honest. Especially because it's a freeze attack, just like Spark Mandrel. But it takes away a lot of his offense and you don't get to see everything that he's capable of. But his main offense is just shooting out little stingrays that cover the arena, the uh, floor of the arena. Not a great boss. Not a great stage either. Like, it's cool in concept because, especially as a kid, you're like, Oh, I'm on a motorcycle thing, yay! Now, as an adult, I'm like, fuck this stage. <laughs> Especially because it killed me. Alright, we beat all the bosses. Ripper Force is at the Space Harbor. I have to go. No, oh, please wait, Zero. I don't want to see you two fight! Someone has to stop your brother! I'm leaving. Spaceport. Oh, this song for the stage is so cool. Oh, the memory's flooding in. I remember being uh, in my grandma's house as a young lad, playing this on my PS1. This exact stage. And that was like after I'd already played this game many, many times. And that was on my second PlayStation, because I had a uh, an OG PlayStation that eventually broke. So I then received a PS1 Slim later as a gift. Oh, I'm getting my ass kicked a little bit. Yeah, be kind and drop some health for me, guys. Oh, that was close. Ah. Tarn it. Sometimes the uh, little wheels will just glitch out and disappear. That's the stage. Who could we possibly fight now? Why, could it be Colonel? I don't want to fight. Step back. I'm sorry. I can't let you through. Iris will be sad if she loses you. Don't be so presumptuous, Zero. Save it until after you've defeated me. I'll show you no mercy. Now get ready! Ah, oh, that's the coolest. This fight's awesome. If you're playing on X's side, then uh, 
when you get halfway through the bosses of the game, rather than getting like an animated cutscene like we got with Zero, you actually fight Colonel. And you have like a warm up fight, which is pretty much like this fight, but uh, his attack pattern isn't as complicated. And then when you get to this point with exits to repeat, you do this fight as well. Colonel's probably one of my favorite bosses to fight in the entire series. Just a really enjoyable fight is Zero. Ah, I jumped too soon. Oh, I can't believe that hit me. Cutting it close. Gotcha. Impressive zero, but it's too late. What? Raptor Force is left for the space. For the space? Force space. Even if I perish, Raptor Force lives. Colonel Zero, tell Iris that her brother died happily. Goodbye, Zero. Colonel! Well, rip. Rip in peace, Colonel. It is kind of sad. He didn't seem like a bad guy, right? Because the Repo Force, I don't think they are Mavericks, not by like the traditional term, not with like, not not with what happened with Doppler in the last game, where he was clearly infected by the Sigma virus. They've left for outer space. Scramble all Maravicantas. Iris, where are you? Iris! She left with them? No! Maravicantas, scramble. I'm on my way. Don't do this to me, Iris. Don't make me question what I'm fighting for. That would be the worst. Now we in space. Oh, we got here really fast, didn't we? Just like, oh, press a button, you're in space. Come on. There we go. You know all the tricks how to lame out enemies in this game. Oh man, it would be a shame if Zero had to fight a fight he didn't want to fight right now. Iris! So you fought with my brother! I'm sorry. Then it's over. Everything. Wait, Iris, listen to me. Goodbye, Zero. Iris. Okay, I'll do it. What a great reading. I like how Iris just, like, immediately becomes a tougher boss than her brother. Iris is the real badass in the family. Also, how are Reploid's brother and sister? Don't worry about it. How is Proto Man Mega Man's brother? Because they have the same creator. I don't know what the exact detail is, like... Colonel and Iris are part of the same model of blah 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 blah... I don't know, they never explain it. <laughs> just don't worry about it. Ah. This fight actually is kind of tough. This takes like, god damn it! This takes a bit of uh, like my Mega Man X skills to be able to play efficiently. She's done. Got ya. Now I give you 
The greatest scene in video game history. Iris! Iris! Sarah! Hang in there, Iris! Please, stay away from Replifoss. Let's live together in a world where only Reploids exist. Iris, there's no world just for Reploid. It's only a fantasy. Yes. I know, but I wanted to believe it. I wanted to live in a world where only Reploids exist with you. Iris! Oh. Iris! 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 Ah! No, this isn't happening! There's no reason for me to go on. What? What am I fighting for? Bravo. 10 out of 10. Oh my god, people make fun of that scene so much. What am I fighting for? In fact, I believe if you just search up there in the search bar, what am I fighting for? In like all caps, we get multiple little short videos of people recording this exact scene, one of which is actually myself on an old YouTube account of mine. Uh, okay, so you have actually branching paths here. You can go top or bottom. I'm gonna go top. I think top's easier with zero. Getting over these spikes is a little tougher with X. You gotta use the uh, web spider weapon. Now I gotta deal with this shit. Also, I believe Jet Singray is how I got the jump dash with zero. I didn't have it before. Okay, this is annoying. God, there's just so much in such a tight space. Also, shout out to that background. That thing looks super cool. But again, they give you health to uh, take it easy on you. And there's the other path you could have taken on that side. Okay, welcome to the worst design thing in this entire game. So this is the boss fight against General, who just popped into existence. This fight was clearly designed with X in mind, and not with Zero. In fact, it's incredibly poorly thought out as Zero. So you'll see what I mean. General! Many died because of you. Those lives are on your conscience. Independence always has a high price. What about Iris? Did you forget her? I have no regrets. Come on, Zero. My fate is sealed. I have no choice. I have no choice. So I just got lucky. So the only time you can really hit him with as zero is when he comes into this exact position. Get an extra hit in there. But if he spends a lot of his time over there doing what he's doing right now, this becomes nay impossible because you can't hit him when he's up against this wall. At least, I don't know, I mean, I guess you could try to do it, but I think if you, like, try to wall jump and get over there, you can't actually hit him because he's technically too close to the wall or something. So you want him to come over to this side as zero, and the RNG sometimes just doesn't work out in your favor, and what is like a minute long fight with X becomes like a 10 minute long fight with zero. It's ridiculous. Like I can't get past him right there. I have to wait for him to come back. I am getting pretty lucky that I have him just below half health fairly easily, but I've seen him do this exact attack pattern like non-stop for like five straight times and there's nothing you can do about it you just gotta wait until he decides to come over so you can hit him there he goes now maybe I'm crazy maybe uh, this is the one part of this game where I'm truly oblivious and ignorant and maybe there is a trick to force him to come over to this side but I've never figured it out as far as I know, it's RNG. There he goes again. 
I don't know, maybe I'll try to stick to the wall if he does like the little bit where he slides down just a little bit. Maybe that'll encourage him to fly over. But I'm pretty sure I've done that before. There's nothing I haven't tried in this respect. See? I'm still doing it. So just sit back and relax. Wait for this fight to be over. And it's not even hard. Like, he's. I haven't been hit yet. He's really easy to dodge. It's not too well thought out. There we go. Come on. There we go. That's the best attack he can do because he'll chill out over here. Whoops, when he does that. Alright, you're done. Got you now. Now he's all screwed up. He's still alive though. What is this? What happened? No, this weapon can't be working. General, what's wrong? Someone else is controlling it. Then, Earth in grave danger. It must be stopped. I'll handle this. Oh no, the final weapon is activating, which begs the question. Why did you design your big new space base into like a mega Armageddon weapon? And how did you get this thing into space so quickly? How did we not stop it beforehand? And who could possibly be activating this weapon? Who would want to destroy the Earth in this universe? There we go, everyone's favorite moment. It's boss rush time. This will allow me to fill up my sub tanks. Should get a decent amount of weapon energy as well. Hello, Web Spider. Good to see you again. There it is, that attack I just did, right there, the little pink saber, that slash beast's weapon. And you can only do it on the ground, it's impossible to hit him with it. It's like, it's seldom used, it has very little purpose to be honest in Zero's game. Damn it. I would say this fight's a lot easier the first time than the first time. Because uh, with the double jump I have more real estate to potentially hit him on the way up. Also, I do more damage thanks to the uh, Storm Owl upgrade. It really does make a difference, doesn't it? Who we got? Cyber Peacock. Right, time to wreck you. Do a better job than I did the first time. So I don't have to worry about showing off Split Mushroom's attack. Whoops. He does come in rather quickly, doesn't he? Also, playing this game using the Frame Meister adds a little bit of lag. So it's not like a perfectly lagless experience. That's the cost of video quality, though. So I ain't doing this game unless it's 1080p60 on original hardware. Thank you, Magic of Upscaling. It's one of my favorite games. I gotta make sure that it looks good, right? It's one of the joys I take. I don't know if there's any like incredibly high quality footage of this game out there. It probably is on YouTube, it's just gonna be buried under the algorithm, like this video will probably be. Because I bet you, like, right now, if you, like, find a long play of this game or something, it'll probably be recorded 
several years ago might be recorded in like 2009 or 10 or 11 or something and the video quality is not going to be great someone probably just ran like regular RCA uh, composite cables into some old video software the game's all blurry so I want to make sure that it looks good uh, there we go gotta drop the uh, ice attack on you you know what I think this fight's easier with the Z saber whoops oh, god damn it I'm jumping into him Yeah, this is easier with the Z Saber. You're done. That was a mistake on my behalf trying to fight him with the uh ice attack the first time it actually goes by faster with the Z saber which I guess makes him less like spark mandrel and more like wheel gator let's see did that no what I like is that uh even if you don't have full health a little bit of the health you pick up will go into a sub tank no matter what Split mushroom. And unfortunately for you, I now have the attack that you gave me, so hitting you is even easier. Also, if you let those soul bodies just collect there, they will eventually start flying around the arena. So I'm like pushing up right against the edge of like how many you can have on screen before they start doing that. It's all just practice. You gotta know exactly when to get rid of him. Oh, I missed him. So he's gonna do into his other attack, but he's almost dead, so there he goes. He splits in half and then eventually they start running in circles around the arena. I think it becomes a little less obvious which one's which. I think the other one like solidifies, so maybe something like that. He might even be able to do two of those. I believe this is Slash Beast. There he is. Let's see if I can fight you a little bit better than the first time I did. Oh, he caught me in the middle of my, uh, damn it, my third swing. It's like it's impossible to cancel out that last attack once you start it. Ah, oh, man, he shoots it out so quickly. Startup is really, really fast. Oh, God, I haven't seen that in ages. Man, he fucked me up. I honestly forgot he could do that little wall dash thing. I haven't been caught by that in a long time. He also doesn't attempt it very often. I don't think he did that in the first fight. Who could it be? Big boy hour. There we go, that's how it's done. Whoops. I gotta remember that I don't have a lot of health. Uh-oh. Come on, just go down, buddy. 
He has another attack that I don't think we ever saw in either fight. Actually, you know what? I think we did. I guess we did see it. Where he, uh... He forms that big ice thing, and it drops down, and then it breaks into sickles. I guess that's what we were seeing. I was just so focused on him that I wasn't noticing. Hello, Storm Owl. I'm gonna try not to use the weapon energy here. I'm trying to save it. Oh, damn it, you bastard. That does a lot of freaking damage. What? That was weird. I might be dead. I'm dead. Ugh. I was trying to be conservative and not use the weapon energy. Or else I could have killed him faster. Man, that sucks. I got killed by Storm Owl. Granted, I went into that fight with like half health, but still. But that's my own fault. That's what I get for uh, not fighting Slash Beast very well. Honestly, that death's gonna haunt me. I'm gonna have trouble sleeping tonight because of it. Like, I died against Storm Owl. I'm a failure. Throw it all away. Start over. Move to a different town. Under a new name. New alias. Alright, cut that out. Meanwhile... Darn it. I was saying this round was going a lot better, but then you get that cheap shot in right at the end. Yeah, some of his, uh, depending on, like, his movements and where he goes and which attacks, is, attacks he uses, he can be uh, a little bit easier to beat than other runs. Aw, oh, man. Those last two tanks are really close to uh, filling up. The only one left... He was the first boss we beat, and appropriately, he's the last one here. A traitor friend, Magma Dragoon. But now we get to see the real fight, I don't have right armor. And with Zero, I don't think he has a weakness. Or you know what, maybe... Did I say that uh, Slash Beast was weak to Storm Owl's weapon? With X? Because Magma Dragoon's weak to it. What's Slash Beast weak to? Oh, it must be, uh, I know what it is. It's Jet Stingray's weapon. My mistake. I'm sure someone probably heard me say that and was like, No, stupid! It's Jet Stingray's. To be honest, I haven't played with X in this game in a long time, and I need to start taking this seriously. I didn't realize how close I was getting to dying. But you're done now. He is a real fight, so... I'm trying to do him early on in the game without, uh, without the right armor without a decent amount of heart tanks so far in the game can be difficult. Then again, why fight him without the right armor, unless you're just doing a challenge run. All right, let's see how close I am to finishing up. Looks like uh, the last subtank needs a little bit more, but I think I'll be able to fill it up. I think there's one more health pickup. Weapon tank looks done. Okay, so I've said at the beginning that Zero side's way better than Axis side. I think this game's more appropriate from Zero's perspective, but more than anything, I think Zero's side is way better than Axis side. For one, that cool cutscene we got at the very beginning when we picked Zero with the uh, Dr. Wily dream, but there's also this cutscene we're about to see, which is one of the coolest things in the entire series. Good work, Zero. You're Sigma. So it was you. <laughs> yes! Simply brilliant. You even defeated Colonel and Iris. You made me do it. No, you wanted to destroy them. 
allow me to remind you that I was once the leader of the Maverick Hunters. What's our current situation? Commander! Where's that red Maverick that wiped out Garma's unit? In, inside, he's inside that door. You may leave now. I'll take care of this personally. By yourself, Commander? I don't want any more of my people being sacrificed. Alright, so I'm going to take it over and do a little bit of play-by-play -play for this fight, because there's no dialogue in it. But this is obviously before the events of Mega Man X1. You will notice that uh, Zero's design in this fight is reflective of his X1 design, that he has the rounded shoulders and not the square ones that we have here in X4 from X2 onwards. So this is back when Sigma was still commander of the Maverick Hunters. Presumably, this would be uh, Zero's second awakening or his first awakening or whatever because zero was likely sealed away the same way x was to eventually be found by someone though for nefarious purposes and under wily's intent so whether this warehouse he's been stored in is a uh, a wily holdover seems very possible they labeled him as a maverick of course he's an incredibly powerful and violent robot he wiped out some sort of Maverick Hunter unit before Sigma, the commander, had to come here and deal with him himself. I remember Zero's not a Reploid, even though like Iris is like, I want to be in a world with Reploids with you! Well, Zero's not a Reploid, because Reploids are based on X's design. X is the like grandfather of all Reploids, but Zero's his own thing, and he likely predates X. I would think that Wily started working on Zero before Light worked on X. And despite all this, Zero is just a masterpiece creation. He is the biggest badass there ever was, and despite coming into this fight with... I mean, Zero seems to lack a lot of, like, intelligence and cognitive ability at this point. He has no weapon, he never uses his buster, he's just using his fist and a pipe. And despite all of this, he still manages to kick the ass of the commander of the Maverick Hunters. Zero won this fight. <laughs> Which just says how terrifying what Dr. Wily really created when he made Zero. And Sigma would have eaten shit and died here if not for Wily's interference. So this is a rather infamous scene among Die Hard and Mega Man fans because of what just happened. Look, it's Commander Sigma! Incredible. Now I'm certain there's no one who's a match for the Commander. What? Take that red maverick to the repair center and, and call Dr. Kane. I wish to have that maverick studied. <sighs> Commander, are you okay? Silence! <laughs> Zero, you are a maverick? What's your point? Are you that surprised? Well, of course not, he was there. This might be bad translation. Ah, Zero, you're most impressive. Sigma, I will defeat you. Yeah, that, uh, that script writing could use some work. So that seems like really, really cool and important to diehard Mega Man fans because of like the implication that it, uh, it holds. Let's do the Sigma fight now. This is probably my favorite Sigma fight in the series. Also, check out that crystal in the background. Kind of looks like the one that Iris had. With terror. You are which would imply that uh, Sigma was behind Iris' betrayal as well, which isn't all that surprising because he was obviously behind Dragoons. And again, I don't think the Rapid Force were technically Mavericks in the traditional sense. So I don't think they were infected with the Sigma virus as much as they were set up by Sigma. On X's side, when you begin the game, rather than uh, in the place of where Zero has that dream about Wily, you get a different animated cutscene in which Sigma, all like shadowy and mysterious, in this exact costume he's in right now, approaches the general about potentially rebelling against the humans, like 
uh, warning him that the humans were gonna soon be labeling his army as Mavericks. And General's like, get the fuck out of my office. And then Sigma's like, ah, you'll see. <laughs> and that's the end of the scene. Okay, that fight's nothing. You just gotta figure out that what he's weak to. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting for you, Zero. Sorry, I went all Akihiko there for a second. It's time for us to settle this. God, this version of Sigma is so cool. Also, this uh, this form is where the Cyber Peacock Giga Crush can come in handy. Trying not to use it so far. Oh, God, his scythe attack does a lot. Damn it. Oh. Sorry, this is taking all my concentration. Oh man, I almost died. I really blew it there right at the tail end. Anyway, I've been distracted by Sigma this entire time. And of course, he has a third form in this game. This is the first time he has a third form. Like, they tease you with this health right here, and they stop you right before you can get it. Ha ha ha! You're finished, Zero! Iris is waiting for you! Tremble with terror! You are finished! God, his face looks so creepy up there. Anyway, the importance of the animated cutscene, right? I've been trying to get to this. Supposedly... Oh my god. I need to use the sub tank. Supposedly that scene is... And like, the reason why Wily seemingly interferes with the fight and stops Zero from killing Sigma is because the goal of the fight was to have Sigma be infected with the Maverick virus. So Wily's responsible for the Maverick virus which eventually mutates into the Sigma virus, or maybe it's the same thing, and, and in-universe we refer to it as the Sigma virus, because Sigma's, like, responsible for, uh, for, like, the spread of it. Though no one, like, the Maverick Hunters in the modern time, like, no one knows who Dr. Wily is, only from, like, the current perspective of the universe, only the fans would know who Dr. Wily is, like, the Maverick Hunters have never known him. He's been lost to history, even though it was only like 150 years ago or something. Also, you'd notice that he has two health bars for these two different forms that we're fighting. This is such a cool fight. But that moment when, uh... When Wily stops Zero, Sigma punches his crystal. Somewhere in between all of this is when Sigma's infected with the virus. That's how he turns Maverick and starts the war against the humans. And that was all... I guess Wily's plan from the very beginning because he hates the world or something and he wants to destroy everything. So he took advantage of the commander of the Maverick Hunters in the future timeline to uh, push his own like human hating, robot hating war agenda. Wily's a crazy bastard, isn't he? Like, like I said, he, he's not like the simple little cartoon, Saturday morning cartoon villain that the classic series makes him out to be. He's a pretty heinous person. Like, the uh, the stakes get raised a lot more in the Mega Man X storyline when you realize, like, wow, this is war. Like, people are dying because of this shit. Huh. Looks like I didn't need to use that last sub-tank, but whatever. Alright, go down, Sigma. Just beat the game. <laughs> What's so funny? This weapon is aimed at Earth. No one can stop it. No! <laughs> Goodbye, Zero. Sigma's just like, ah, it doesn't matter. This thing's gonna shoot off and hit Earth. Doesn't matter if I die. If only someone would martyr themselves right now to stop this thing from firing. Oh, hey, General. General! Zero, I was wrong. Sigma, he blinded me to the truth. It's okay. Rest. With my body, I can stop the weapon. But 
Then you'll... It's over for this soldier. Farewell. General! And he murks himself to stop this thing from firing. This is what happened to me. This is my fate. I couldn't save anyone after all. Iris! <laughs> Please stop, brother! Sarah! Iris, did we Reploids all turn out to be Mavericks after all? And that's it. That's all you get. And again, I don't know how potentially accurate that translation was at the end, because it's a weird line. Iris, did we Reploids all turn out to be Mavericks after all? Well, you're not a Reploid, Zero. I've been over this. Thank you, KG Inafune and Bamboo. Uh, and that's a very old Capcom tradition of using your nickname. I feel like an asshole because I don't remember exactly who was the director of this game, because it wasn't really Inafune, it was someone else. Inafune was like executive roles and whatever, and then it all kind of made sense why these games are kind of good after Mighty Number no. 9 came out, and you're like, wow, he he does not do a good of a job when he's directly in control of a game. Because uh despite the fact he's like he gets a lot of credit in the Mega Man X series, there were a lot of talented people at Capcom that were making these like middle Mega Man X games really, really good, especially this one. This game's fantastic, I love it. So, uh, I really like this game. I mean, I, I think I think it plays well. I think it has a unique uh, feel to it. The ability to play as X or Zero. X5 and 6 obviously have that as well, but uh, 5 and 6 kind of like add some things that didn't necessarily need to be there and it kind of clutters the game a little bit. Same way that X3 got kind of cluttered as well. Uh, the only downside is for this game is I wish that X and Zero were in each other's stories. Uh, I wish you could play as both of them on the same file, but you can't. It's one or the other. Uh, I wish the stages weren't split into two. And beyond that, there's not really many other flaws with the game. Except for maybe the general fight with Zero. Th that one's a bit of a mess. But other than that, this is like an excellent game. I think this is the best Mega Man game. It doesn't doesn't have to... You don't have to agree with that, but that's how I feel. And I've played just about all of them. And this one's really, really special to me. So... I think what's really cool about this game is if you're a diehard fan of the series and you actually care about the like story in the universe a little bit, like this is the only game that like really has any sort of tie-in with like not the only one I should say, but it does the best job of like satiating that hunger to be like, I want the Mega Man X universe to have a really strong connection with the classic universe. And this is the first one where it's like, oh yeah, like here's all these homages to the past and we get multiple cutscenes now where Wily's in the game uh, Zero's dream sequence with Wily this last animated cutscene where we actually see Zero in a Wily capsule it has the skull at the bottom and the W at the top it's like oh that's so cool that's so satisfying as a fan to like get that acknowledgement and like actually see see that properly in game because it doesn't happen enough to be honest like the fans always wanted it but like Capcom never took the time to like make a hard connection between the two, even though everyone knew it. There's not enough of like that type of fan service, in my opinion. The battle is ended, but for some reason, Zero's memories of the past continue to haunt his mind. As a hunter, it is his duty to go after those mavericks. And at the same time, he knows that it is his destiny to defeat his friend one day. Two different people, two different fates. In the future... Zero's decision will greatly lead two hunters to tragedy. The future is coming. That's a pretty good lead into X5. Because X5 does kind of deliver on that promise a little bit. Like X3 was like that as well. It's like, 
X will have to fight his friend. And then we get the same thing on Zero's side in this game. For X, the ending is uh, pretty similar. X, uh, after he defeats Sigma, in general, murks himself on that side as well. X is more concerned about, like, how and why Ma uh, Rough Blades to continue to become Mavericks. At this point, like, you would think the Sigma virus, like, it's well known enough now, like, Sigma exists as a virus, but I suppose it isn't completely obvious to people in the universe that, like, it can spread to other Reploids. And it's not as simple as Reploids making the decision to rebel as much as it is that they are straight up infected. And X5 goes hard on that concept of the Sigma virus. That is like the key theme of X5. So X ends this game being like really worried like, what if I become a Maverick one day? And unfortunately, the voice acting for X is like he's an eight-year-old kid because whatever, whoever decided to localize this game in 1997 didn't think to like differentiate between Mega Man Classic and Mega Man X. Because Classic Mega Man and Mega Man 8, he is like, oh, Dr. Wily. He has a little kid voice and they give it to X for some reason. It's terrible. It's awful. So we avoided the worst of the voice acting. Like that's way worse than Zero going, Iris. That That's way worse. And so he, he then get, gets a call from Zero and he's like, Zero, if I become a Maverick, you have to take care of me. And like Zero doesn't say anything because I guess like the implication is that like in his head, Zero's already like thinking the things of like, man, I'm going to have to fight X someday, aren't I? Like, knowing his, like, weird, mysterious past. He's like, promise me, Zero. And he's like, shut up. Shut up about your foolishness. And then it, the game just ends. Stupid eye catch, go away. Let me talk about, let me talk about Mega Man X stuff for in this video. Because I, I want to talk about more. Because I like the Mega Man X. I like the X4. Uh, let me get an option. That'll, that'll prevent the eye catch from coming up. So, X5, the next game in the series. I think there was, like, a decent development cycle from this game to X5. This is 97 and X5 might not have been until like 2000, something like that. So X5 is like the game where X5 is supposed to be the end of the series. Like it was supposed to be the end of the series. That was the original plan is that it would be the final Mega Man X game. So it's supposed to tie together like a lot of these ideas like R, X and Zero on a collision course to fight one another. What is it that causes Reploids to become Maverick and all that good stuff? And uh, I just looked it up. X5 came out in November of 2000 for Japan and February 2001 America. So the, there was some time between this game and the next one. Three years. So uh, X5 is a really cool game. I don't think the, the production value on that game isn't as high as this game. This is like the only Mega Man X game up until I think X8 that has like fully animated scenes x7 might have like some cg garbage but who cares uh like x5 doesn't have voice acting i don't think maybe it did in the japanese version but it definitely doesn't in english uh x5 is such a i think it's probably like the coolest story game it is like the biggest uh fan service game in terms of like giving people that interesting story and the connection to the classic series. There are a lot of homages to the classic series in that game, but uh, I, I don't feel like it's as tight of a game as this one. It's not as like well thought out in terms of like the stages and the power ups you get and stuff like that. But other than that, the game's really, really good. And uh, I'll get to that one hopefully in the near future. I mean, I've been blazing through these now and I'm assuming that the, all these videos are going up pretty relatively close to one another. Maybe I'll wait on this one just a little bit. But, uh, man, I look forward to it. I, I can't wait. And we're halfway through the series now. There are eight games. We're now four down. So look forward to X5. I'll see you guys around.